Well, on Sunday morning, I told the children about the various new Swedish arrivals that have come to live in our house. I was, of course, talking about furniture. Uh, if you've ever bought anything from IKEA, uh, you'll know that the various bits of furniture uh, have all of these names. Uh, well, if you've never shopped at IKEA, uh, I'm sure at some point you've at least wrestled with some flat pack furniture. Uh, you unpack the box and there are bits and pieces everywhere. There are various nuts and bolts. But the good news is there is at least a plan. Uh, there are step-by-step -step instructions to follow. And if you follow those instructions, you'll have a completed piece of furniture. Uh, well, last Tuesday, we began to look at Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 11. Uh, this week, I want us to pick up where we left off. And so we see today uh, that God has a plan. Uh, we read, In him we have obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will. God has a plan. God has a purpose. He has a will. Now, that should be a great comfort to us as Christians. I said on Sunday, uh, like a piece of unassembled flat pack furniture, uh, our lives might often seem messy and confusing. Uh, bits and pieces uh, spread about everywhere, a mess of, of nuts and bolts. How does everything fit together? Well, we have an assurance. Uh, however messy things might be, God has a plan. Nothing is outside of his control. Uh, but the particular focus here in verse 11 is God's plan for our salvation. Uh, Paul uses the word predestined. Uh, in him we have obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will. God predestined. It was his plan to save in eternity past. If you're a Christian today, it's because God's plan was to save you and to bring you to repentance and to faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. I was reading today an article about the American presidential election. Uh, will, will Donald Trump succeed by persuading Americans to vote for him again, or will there be a new president? Uh, While well, some people might pride themselves on their success in being able to call such things. We're not to try and make sense of this verse by saying, well, this means that God was able to see into the future. He knew that one day I'd become a Christian. We're not to make sense of the verse by limiting it uh, to God being an excellent forecaster of events. No, salvation is of God from beginning to end. To be predestined uh, is to be part of the plan that God has made uh, and that means a person is only a Christian because God has made it so. If God only has foreknowledge, if we limit God to that, it means we exalt ourselves. It, it means we're saying I'm the reason I'm a Christian uh, but the teaching of scripture is clear. Uh, look over into chapter 2 and see how chapter 2 begins. It says, And you were dead in the trespasses and sins in which you once walked. Uh, nothing that's dead brings itself to life. Uh, and so we must say, salvation is of the Lord. If you've come to faith in Christ, it's because you were predestined. It's because you are, you are part of God's eternal plan. Notice too in this verse that it's God who works out his plan. Uh, we read, in him we have obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will. When I spent some of last week putting together 
flat pack furniture. It wasn't enough just to have the plan and to be in possession of the plan. I also needed to work the plan. I needed to go through each of the steps. I needed to complete them. I needed to be turning the screwdrivers and the allen keys. I needed to be turning the bolts and, and hammering the nails. Without that work, there's no completion of the plan. And so it is, God has a plan and he also works his plan. And again, doesn't that give us great comfort? Uh, there's nothing that happens in our lives that isn't God working out the plan. Uh, I've said this many times. Uh, remember the different tenses of salvation. Uh, you might be able to say, I was saved. You look at back at the time when you became a Christian. But the Bible also speaks of being saved. Uh, when we were looking um, at Philippians recently on Sundays, remember there in Philippians chapter 2. Paul encourages us, uh, verse 12 of Philippians chapter 2, to work out our own salvation. He was writing to Christians, to people who could say, I've been saved. But those Christians were also to work out their own salvation. The Christians were also being saved. They were being refined and sanctified, made like the Lord Jesus Christ. We can be confident that behind all the events of our lives is the hand of God, the work of God in our lives. He is working for our salvation. He is at work. Uh, he has not just planned, but he also works out his plan. He orders and, uh, if you like, he turns the nuts and bolts of our lives. Uh, to use that picture again of, of assembling furniture at some stages, at some stages in our lives, you think this is never going to get done, just like with a piece of furniture. How will this piece of furniture ever be made to look like the picture on the box? Uh, you can't see how it's all going to come together. But the plan is worked. And what's the result? We'll look again at verse 11 and uh, we'll read now into verse 12 as well. In him we have obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will, verse 12, so that we who were the first to hope in Christ might be to the praise of his glory. Last week we had a new single bed delivered to the house and uh, to my surprise it came in a box uh, that was about this big, not very big at all. Uh, and so I said to the delivery driver, is that it? Uh, are you sure there aren't any more boxes on your van? I ordered a bed. Uh, well, he assured me that was it. Uh, well, the box, we opened it, uh, the plan was studied, and then the plan was worked. And at the end of it, we had a bed. Uh, and I can assure you, even if you're over six foot tall, it's long enough and uh, you'll get a good night's sleep on it. And so when the thing was finally assembled, you can imagine I looked at it with a kind of wonder. Uh, who'd have thought that that little box could become that bed? Uh, what a remarkable design. Uh, what clever ingenuity. Well, how much more so with our salvation. Our salvation is God's design. Um, our salvation is, is God's plan in eternity past. Our salvation is God's work in our lives, both when we first believed and also every day. But ultimately our salvation is for the praise of his glory. He has all the glory. Who would have thought that God could transform me. Uh, look what God has done in the lives of his people. See how God has changed what was ugly and sinful. See how God has changed that life so that it now reflects something of the Lord Jesus Christ. See how God has taken what was small 
and unpromising and transformed a person to an instrument of his service and glory. All praise to God. Uh, our salvation is to the praise of his glory. Let's pray this evening uh, when we meet to pray uh, that we would see more of the glory of God in salvation in our lives and also in the lives of others.